Dustin the Diamond Poirier. I don't know if anybody's, I've never even heard him talk about why that's his, that's his nickname. But I can tell you the reason it should be his nickname, if not, is Diamonds Don't Break. That guy is not breakable, not breakable, cannot be broken. You will not find a single loss that he has where his ability to continue was affected by his mind. He got strangled to death by Khabib and uh, Charles and got knocked out, like out the other times, okay? In any fight where the fight goes to who is a bigger savage, which happens all the time in fights, all the time, he has never lost one of those fights. He's won all of them, all of them. All of them. So we've established he's never been broken, right? You know what else he's never done? Finished a guillotine in a UFC fight. Stop ju- <laughs> stop jumping guillotines, Dustin. I'll never stop. That is the funniest thing ever, dude. No more guillotines. Immediately du- jumps a guillotine and, and it slips out again, dude. That is so funny. And then after the... All right, let's get into this. A lot to get to, but we're looking right here at the two MVPs of the night, Dustin Poirier and Sean O'Malley unbelievable performances by both of them there's a lot to break down coming out of those fights in terms of who's next what it does for their legacy the performances as a whole the guys they beat so on so forth etc but there i'm gonna go through this like there are a bunch of takeaways from this card that i'm not sure everybody is going to have just uh randomly thought of on your own because a lot of really notable stuff happened that's going to lead to huge stuff coming up uh in the ufc so we're talking about that. We'll talk about Michael Venom Page. Actually, basically every single fight on the entire main card has massive implications going forward. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of that. And uh, and then also uh, Dana White. I'm going to show you a clip of Dana. Uh, his thoughts on the Francis Ngannou fight because that was pretty notable. Uh, pretty notable. And it, uh, well, you know what? Actually, I'll probably do that in a separate video because it's a much bigger topic. But uh, But look for that. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I love you guys. I appreciate you. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the fights last night because they were super, super fun. Now, I want to go right here to begin with. Okay, so like when we talk about meaningful, big, impactful fights that happened yesterday, last night, that are going to lead to things going forward, you got to start right there, dude. Okay, that guy... If you were not watching the prelims at that point, okay, like if you were not watching the prelims and you did not see this fight, if you don't know who this guy is, Rebellus to Spain, he's a uh, like a, an Olympic an Olympic champion, Taekwondo and like whatever guy from Cuba. So he's like he's he's won his last four fights in a combined thirty seven seconds. Okay, four heavyweight knockouts, including the fight last night, in thirty seven seconds. Okay. Now, I had seen this guy's knockouts going into the fight, but they were clearly against guys that were like, you know, whatever. So you just never know, dude. Like, you never know with guys like that that are just starching. You know, they're 3-0, and and they're starching guys in little kind of regional shows. You have no idea what the, what's going to happen when they get in against real talented, you know, opposition. And, oh, my God. Not only did he win by, you know, 18-second knockout, but the way he did it, was insane if you did not see this knockout he threw up okay again this guy is 200 he weighed in at 262 okay he's he's enormous dude i actually don't know how he weighs that little he looks like he weighs 500 pounds he threw a a loose like a lethal head kick and he and he slid and his, and his pivot foot slipped out from under him so he fell and this guy and you know josh Prezen, he he charged him and running backwards running backwards heavyweight 262 pounds the guy threw three punches and landed all three of them clean like landed all three of them he's a surgeon and he's got absolutely nuclear knockout power and then he hit them then you know the third one landed clean knockout okay so this guy is a problem at heavyweight i posted that's what i tweeted afterwards i was like if you're a heavyweight in the ufc and that did not make you nervous you are out of your mind dude no one is that accurate no one no one is that accurate that's that size running back running backwards not moving backwards running backwards insanity dude 
So that guy, when you see that this dude is going to be on a fight card, you need to clear your schedule and make sure that you watch because this is like, this is the most exciting heavyweight prospect we've had in like forever, dude. Forever. Get, that's why I made him first. Get this dude on your radar because the next time he fights, you need to understand how big of a deal it is that this guy's fighting. He is, this says he went seven for nine. Well, man, I don't know how that's seven. Maybe, maybe he landed four. I don't know. This dude is going to be a serious problem, and he is very exciting. Now we're going to move over to the main event, and then we're going to go backwards. I just wanted to make sure, because that guy was on the early prelims, that if you did not see that guy, you need to know that I'm doing you a favor. Now we're going to go to like the main card, and we'll go in descending order, uh, because we have all this. And then I want to make sure there is a preliminary fight that I need you to hear me talk about. I officially have a least favorite fighter in the UFC, straight up. If you follow me on Twitter, you already know who it is, but... That's bottom line. We are going to talk about that shortly, but we're going to go through the main card first. So let's do that. All right. So let's start O'Malley and Vera. I know everybody does this in, in the opposite order, but I'm going to do it this way because there's a lot to talk about in all of them. So O'Malley, UFC bantamweight champion, is officially on the W column when it comes to Marlon Vera. He avenged the only loss that he had. I told, I said, literally, I had this conversation with someone at my gym yesterday who looked at me like I was like crazy when I was like, in all seriousness, that loss really was pretty fluky, though. And he's like, "Really?" It's like people go are people are split in half on on the perennial nerve thing being a fluke, you know? Because I really do. I mean, it's not a fluke. It's not a fluke. But it's like you do a technique exactly the same a million times, and like once in a blue moon, it just hits that perennial nerve in the way where it just deads your your leg, you know? Like that is weird to to think about that as like not kind of fluky you know what I mean like of course Cheeto won he threw a kick he dead you know he deaded his his foot and then he jumped him and you know put him down like so it's I mean it's a legitimate win but the only reason that it matters if you're like oh has this guy lost is when you're trying to assess his ability to win or lose coming up next time you know so literally the only time that O'Malley has looked human against anyone all right was when he got his perennial nerve folded or against Peter Yan, which was a really close fight. And we're going to talk about Peter Yan because Peter Yan is officially 100% the best fighter in UFC history to go on a four-fight skid. That I am going to tell you right now. That guy, well, <laughs> that, that, that might be a little strong. Definitely the best fighter in the UFC currently that lost four fights in a row. That guy, is, he has not lost a step. He has not missed a beat. The way he approached that fight last night, I'm, I'm stepping on what I'm going to talk about later, but but Peter Yan is such a gangster, dude. Anyway, but yeah, so O'Malley uh, gets revenge for the only loss that he ever had. And I mean, if you want to talk about a decisive victory, dude, like that was a fucking shellacking, dude. And I mean, listen, m props to Cheeto Vera. That was, I mean... That knee, I mean, I know everyone's going to talk about this, but that knee that he ate was like, how did he eat that knee? You cannot throw a more pure technique than that, and it couldn't hit a guy more clean, and he just ate it. That doesn't even make sense. He wasn't even like, he, he didn't even like wobble and have to survive. That I mean, that's just absolutely crazy to me. But O'Malley is a surgeon. The guy is a surgeon. He's so good at what he does. And I mean, I, I just, I'm going to say this in advance, okay? Very important point that I'm going to make right now. I really like Marab's personality. I think he's hilarious. I think that he is one of the funniest guys in the UFC. Everybody loves him. He's awesome. If Marab beats O'Malley, okay? Like if Marab beats O'Malley and we get a champion who has attempted 50 takedowns in a fight before, I am going to be so pissed. Like I, I can't, I just, I can't tell you I will be so pissed because O'Malley is the most exciting style, most exciting. He's the most exciting person to watch in the UFC, in my opinion, period. And I said that like on Instagram the other day, someone was like, who's your favorite fighter? Uh, it was someone who had like a big, you know, a big thread. And I answered and I said, Sean, because, you know, like what am I favorite? Sean, he's the one that I'm most excited to watch. He has the most exciting style. He is a, you know, a tactical magician. The guy's got so many ways to attack. He is simultaneously so careful and also so aggressive at the same time. It's like very, very, very impressive. He's so accurate. 
Like you never, ever, ever see O'Malley throw big strikes that miss by a lot. Ever, dude. Like guys that fight, I, and I, I hadn't really even thought about that until last night, that like guys who fight O'Malley, you better get real good at blocking, you know? Like blocking. Because, like, you know, like the way to, that people defend well against O'Malley is, you know, because that guy is going to hit the target. It's like crazy how accurate he is. His striking, his accuracy is bananas. He's so long. But yeah, man, like, I don't know. I'm I'm ecstatic that he won. Uh, I picked him to win. Speaking of that, by the way, uh, just in case anybody has not been watching my... Uh, it's not been watching my content this week. I was asked for my lock bet of the weekend, and I said MVP over Kevin Holland. That was my lock bet of the weekend. I said it multiple times. I also said O'Malley was going to win. I also said Dustin Poirier was going to win. And I also, a week ago, told you to bet on Jake Paul to win by first-round knockout over the Uber driver. So people have been following my bets for the last eight days. You guys are making some serious dough. But uh, anyway, the... Uh, I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't really have a, a whole lot to say about the fight other than it was wildly impressive. O'Malley's, O'Malley's fight style, his ability to get eyeballs on him makes him a star that's big enough to where you don't really need to like concern yourself about his mic skills. Everybody's like, because people keep asking, you know, what do you think about Sean on the mic? Okay. Well, what you're all saying when you ask that is I don't really find him very charismatic on the microphone. That's why you're asking, because that's your interpretation. And you're like, is everybody seeing what I'm seeing? Because the guy's obviously a big star, but like, I don't get the same feeling I get watching him talk as I do when I see Conor McGregor talk. And it's like, yeah, that's because he's not that type of guy on the microphone. Like he has a different, you know, he's a, he's a different type of person. He's funny. You know, like if you watch his reels, he's hilarious. Like he's super funny. I like when he does. Uh, I like when he'll like read his comments, and someone will like suggest some kind of uh, striking technique, and then he'll do it on the bob. You know, someone will say some stupid shit to him about what you know what to do, and then he'll go against you know against the bob, and he'll do that technique. He's like he's like a funny dude that obviously be super fun to hang out with, but being fun to hang out with and doing the thing that Conor McGregor does or whatever the thing is where a person sits in front of the microphone, they start talking and you're like, you just feel like a magnetic, like, you know, you, you're just eyeballs are just like glued on them. There <laughs> is a very, very, very small group of people that have that very small. And it, obviously if you look at the UFC, that would, that is one of the most valuable things that you can have being a prize fighter. How many people have it? Seriously, like how many people actually have that thing? You know, Connor, Izzy, you know, Izzy's not like, Con yes, he is. I'm not saying he's as good or funny as Connor, but he absolutely is that magnetic type of person where when he's talking, you want to watch him every single time. You know what I mean? Izzy, like Shale, fucking, uh, I don't know. Like, I should have thought of that this before, but you understand what I'm saying. It's super rare, dude. Like Kevin Holland, Michael Venom Page, there's not a lot of guys that have that skill. But at the end of the day, like that's that is only one component of why you're excited to watch a fighter. And Sean has every other one 10 out of 10, as far as I'm concerned. So congratulations, O'Malley. Now, speaking of absolute savages, let's talk about Dustin Poirier because holy shit. Okay. Now, I don't know if you guys uh watched when I talked about this fight, but I said you got to okay, Poirier is however old he is and people are like, "Oh wow, you know, last time I saw him fight, he got head kick KO'd." And I'm like, "That's why everyone's picking against him." And it's like, "Did you see how good he looked in that Gaethje fight before he got caught?" You know, I mean, listen, as as long as he recovered from that head kick, you, you and if you're talking about like a war of attrition because everyone's all that but no you know the Saint Denis guy he just never stops I'm like have you been watching Poirier's career like that's if if part of your if part of your equation is like this guy never stops so his opponents break bad fucking read if you're like he'll probably beat Dustin it's like have you when has Dustin Poirier broke down his name's the diamond right do diamonds ever break no, they don't, okay? 
Dustin the Diamond Poirier. I don't know if anybody's, I've never even heard him talk about why that's his, that's his nickname. But I can tell you the reason it should be his nickname, if not, is Diamonds Don't Break. That guy is not breakable, not breakable, cannot be broken. You will not find a single loss that he has where his ability to continue was affected by his mind. He got strangled to death by Khabib and uh, Charles and got knocked out, like out the other times, okay? In any fight where the fight goes to who is a bigger savage, which happens all the time in fights, all the time, he has never lost one of those fights. He's won all of them, all of them. All of them, every single one, okay? He's the one guy where like, when he looks like he's in trouble, you're like, it's dude, it's Poirier, man. Like this happens all the time. It happens all the time to him. He was in bigger trouble against Chandler than he was against uh, St. Denis last night. He was in bigger trouble against Gaethje than he was against, you know, like the first Gaethje fight. He's been in trouble like that a million times and he just breaks guys. He just breaks them, you know? He just, or, or at the very least, He's a diamond, can't be broken, waits until they make a mistake and he puts him down. Like, Saint Denis is a savage. When they started getting into those exchanges, though, like when they started getting, I'm like, dude, Dustin's going to knock this guy out. And then he did very soon afterwards, and I was ecstatic. He's such a badass, dude. He's such a badass. He's like, Poirier is like the guy where he's kind of like Khabib, dude, honestly. Like, in, just in terms of how I look at the guy, you know, like Khabib obviously comes from Dagestan and it's like, you know, very different culture. But just in terms of like, you look at the guy's life, it's like, okay, family guy. What does he do with his, uh, with his, uh, with his free time? Charity, you know? And he just grinds, dude. And then just never breaks in fights. It shit is so impressive, dude. He is a savage. I would love to see him fight Islam Mak. You know what? They got to give him that title shot. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say that right now. They got to give him that title shot next after uh, uh, after Islam fights tonight. I assume Islam is going to fight Charles again or something. I don't know. They even said who Islam's going to fight, whatever. But they should give DP a title shot because if any, like, DP's gone his entire career and gotten this close multiple times. Islam is the number one pound for pound guy in the world. No one will pick DP in that fight. If Dustin Poirier fucking wins, dude, if Dustin Poirier gets a shot at Islam and he wins, that will be like, I will, I will just immediately go, karma exists and the right things happen for the right people. Give him that fight, man. He's so popular now. It's amazing what it does when you knock out Conor McGregor, dude. People really like you afterwards, even if they love Conor. You know what I mean? Even if people love Conor, if you knock out Conor, they're going to love you too. This game is crazy. So Kevin Holland, Michael Venom Page, my stone lock bet of the night went exactly as I anticipated in exactly the way that I anticipated. I said, ex I mean, what was my breakdown? I was like, hey, who's the only person on the feet that has just utterly made Kevin Holland like totally ineffective? Wonder Boy. Who is the most similar fighter to Wonder Boy who's potentially a little bit faster and more challenging to deal with? Michael Venom Page, done. There's my breakdown. That's what's going to happen. I bet bet on him, obviously, and he won. There's nothing else to say about that. It's too bad he couldn't get a finish because people were saying it was like boring, but it was like, I don't know. I don't find him boring, man. Uh, and then Jack Della Magdalena, there's not much to say there. That guy is a savage. And uh, I think that was a ridiculously late stoppage. What the fuck was they, what, what the fuck was he looking at, dude? seriously what like what happened there why did he like why why did he let him keep getting punched there he he gave no indication that he was trying to recover at all there that was weird it wasn't as bad as the bobby green one but it was like you know he just laid there afterwards like did you see that he's like i'm okay and he just laid there and laid there and laid there. like that was fucked up man that was really bad dude that was a really bad stoppage i mean like i said not as egregious as the bobby green one but that was bad dude that was a very late stoppage in my opinion but Anyway, it is what it is. Congratulations, Jack Della Magdalena, Gilbert Burns, you're a savage. You know, this is like, last night was supposed to be the night where you had like the, you know, the changing of the guard and you had that in one case and in the other case, the diamond never breaks, man. 
Um, and then you had Peter Yong and Song Yudong. I am so happy I'm going to talk about this right now. So what I've always found the most impressive about Peter Yong is his approach to the fight. Because he is so consistent with how he does this. And, and I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you think that this is not accurate, go watch, pick a fight. Literally, pick any of his fights. What Peter Yon does, his strategy as a fighter, is he sandbags the first fat half of the fight, period. That is what he does, okay? So in the first half of the fight, first half, okay? So if he's doing a five-round fight, two and a half rounds. If he's doing a three-round fight, one and a half rounds. What he does, he sandbags. He goes 65, 65, 70%. And that's why it looks like, oh, you know, like this is a competitive fight. Like this is a really competitive fight. Wow, this is looking really competitive. And he waits because halfway through the fight, what happens to his opponents? They slow down, right? The opponents slow down a little bit, right? They slow down just a little bit. And then he increases. He does it in every single fight. He do, I, I'm telling you, watch any of his fights. He does it in every single fight. Now, last night... Because, you know, he's coming off, he's coming off four losses. And I want to just do this really quick. Aljamain Sterling first fight, disqualification knee. That, a fight that he was decisively winning. Coming off of a, a huge streak of wins, right? You know, defending champion. The, Al, the second Aljo fight, I was there. Controversial decision. Dana White was like, Peter Yan won that fight. Next one, fights O'Malley. Very close fight. No one would have been angry if they, I mean, I mean, obviously there are a lot of O'Malley fans, but no one would have, would have thrown a rock at the decision if they gave it to Jan. All right. So you have three fights, three losses, none of which are losses. Okay. None of which are losses. The last two are draws at worst. If there's no 10, nine must system, you know? So that's your O and three. Then he fights Marab, and Marab crotch sniffed him to death. 50 takedown attempts. 50. 50. And so, yeah, he lost that fight, and he walked out unscathed aside from, you know, his ego not being able to deal with the guy who's chasing his legs the entire night. So that's 0-4 in four, in four fights. So going into this fight, if, you, if your confidence is not rattled as a guy who lost your last four fights, you're a psycho. So he had to have at least been aware that his back was against the wall and he still went in there and did the same thing he always does. He was that confident that he sandbagged the first ma- the first round and a half, okay? And I bet you if you haven't watched a lot of Peter Yan, you would not know that. And so last night you'd be like, wow, you know, like it's just, you know, Song Yudong really started to slow down. Nah, 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 nah. I mean, yes, but nah. Peter Yan, go watch Peter Yan and go watch every one of his fights Just go to the exact, literally exact halfway point of the fight every time and then watch what happens. He he literally hits another gear every single, and then that gear, he keeps up for the rest of the fight. It's exactly what he did to Song Yudong and it was ridiculously impressive. He was looking, he was looking like he was gonna lose that fight and he still stuck to the game plan and then he beat the shit out of Song Yudong for the remainder of the fight. Awesome, 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 awesome. So congratulations, Peter Yan and uh, Song Yudong. You're awesome too. That was just a, you know, tough matchup. Now, Curtis Blades, uh, that is a serious hype train derailment right there. You know, I was very, dude, I said this too. It was a really interesting matchup because Jalton Almeida is a uh, a one-trick pony specialist and he is incredible with that one trick, right? He is a submission grappler, the, the likes of which the heavyweight division has not seen in years. But Curtis Blades is a super, super, super good wrestler. So what happens if he's able to kind of make Almeida unable to take it to the ground? And it's like, well, in this case, what he can do is hammer fist his brain out. (laughs) So good for him, dude. Curtis Blades on a streak. Macy Barber and uh, Shikugian, zippity-doo-dah. That fight was, uh, I actually stopped watching it. Um and then Gamrot, this is the one I wanted to talk about. So, uh, Matus Gamrot seems like a nice dude. Honestly, actually, I will say this in advance. On the microphone after the fight, I couldn't understand a goddamn word he said. Literally, not a word. Nothing. I couldn't understand a word. Not one fucking word that he said. Uh, but I can look at the guy, look at his eyes, kind of look at how he carries it, and I'm like, I would get along with this guy really well. We would be friends if we hung out. That said... 
He is my least favorite UFC fighter. I can't, like, I, I can, he's my least favorite, like, contender. I can't stand watching him fight, man. I literally, like, I can't, I can't stand watching him fight. I cannot stand it. I can't stand it. It's like, his style is, oh, is there a little bit of excitement in this fight? Let me snuff it out, you know? Is that a spark of excitement? I'm going to snuff out the excitement. I want to make sure no one has anything to cheer about in this fight. It is, it's exhausting. Every time he fights, that's how I feel. I'm like, oh my God, dude. You know, hey, let's, let's create the perfect fighter. He is always going to go for takedowns. He is great at never giving up on a takedown attempt. He usually will somehow get the takedown to the mat, but not in very dramatic fashion. And then once he's there, he won't do any damage whatsoever. Uh, but he'll, he's, but as soon as the, you know, the guy who's on the bottom who you're rooting for to stand up so you cannot bleed from boredom out of your eyeballs, he will eventually pin him again against the fence and he will boringly pull him back down to the mat. And you're like, oh my God, dude, he'll win by decision. You'll think of, huh? So was there like a single exciting moment in that fight that he initiated? No, 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 not one zero. There was not one. Not one. No. Well, you know, he landed some punches. Yeah, he landed some punches. Okay. How many of those were power punches that felt like maybe it was going to be a knockout? Well, in this fight, none. Right. Right. Yeah, none is the answer. Zero. He's boring. I can't stand it, dude. Anyway, but seems like a nice guy. Uh, Kyler, you know, Kyler Phillips looked amazing. And this is the last one I wanted to cover was Michelle Pereira because God damn son, that dude moves up to middleweight and just eviscerates this dude body shot strangle one minute. That was unbelievable. Anyway, I got a lot more videos to cover today, but, uh, yeah, that is my recap of UFC 299 and it was amazing. And you got a lot of fun stuff coming up and I want Dustin give Dustin Poirier that title shot. Uh, anyway, love you guys. Bye.